So in unit two, we're going to discuss discovery. Discovery is an important activity that we're gonna perform at multiple stages of the product life cycle, not just at the beginning when we come up with an idea for a new product, but throughout the product life cycle, for example, when we come up with new releases or when we come up with major new features that we want to build. In this unit, we're going to talk about, first of all, purpose and problem as starting points. So purpose being what problem are you trying to solve as an, as an organization? What's our goal as an organization? And problem as the problem we're trying to solve for our customers and our users. There's this term MVP, minimum viable product, it gets thrown around a lot. People mean different things by it. We're going to talk about what it is and what it isn't. We're going to talk about this very important discipline of framing our ideas as hypotheses that we're going to validate. And then we're going to discuss a bunch of tools that we can use in discovery. We're going to talk about proto personas and empathy maps and uh, some other tools as well, canvases. And we're going to talk about the different kinds of user research and how we can use those in discovery. There's this very common idea that organizations, corporations, companies have this job, which is to make money. And this is actually a relatively new idea in the sense of uh, having a legal responsibility to make as much money as possible. So there's a paper by Jensen and Mechling called Theory of the Firm that's actually from the 20th century where it says that the directors of a public corporation have a fiduciary duty, that's a legal responsibility, to maximise profits. So this idea that corporations have to maximise profits, this is not an idea that's you know as, as old as making money. This is a, a very new idea um, in the context of historical time. Um, and it actually is very problematic. There's been research that's done into this idea and, and the impact of this idea that corporations have to maximise profits. And what has been found is that the companies that place the highest priority on profit in their mission statement were universally less profitable than firms that didn't. So that is, if your goal is actually to maximise profits, uh, it's not a good idea to state that as your goal because it will make you less successful at achieving that goal. So there's a book by John Kay called Obliquity that discusses this research. Um, there's another book called Fixing the Game by Roger Martin, which presents research that shows that the shareholder value model has presided over a decline in the rate of return, both on equity investment and investment capital. But there is one group of people who has benefited enormously from this focus on maximizing profits. And in Fixing the Game, it says there's been an eightfold increase in CEO compensation from 1980 to 2000. So the people who've done really well out of the shareholder value model of maximizing profits are executives. So this is starting to change. Last year, 2019, there was a statement by a large number of CEOs of big companies saying that shareholder value is no longer everything. Um, in this article from New York Times discussing this statement, says chief executives from the business roundtable, including the leaders of Apple and JP Morgan Chase, argued that companies must also invest in employees and deliver value to customers. There are major companies that are very clearly focused on the mission, not on making money. So, uh, you know, I hesitate to cite Elon Musk as an example because it's, a bit tired and Elon Musk is not unproblematic, but I do think SpaceX is an interesting organization. Um, they're the first company to build a private spaceship that's docked with the International Space Station. This is the Dragon module that you can see on screen now. And their mission is that the company was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk to revolutionize space transportation and ultimately make it possible for people to live on other planets. Now, again, the idea that we're gonna survive as a species by living on other planets is not unproblematic, but what you can say about this is it's not focused on maximizing shareholder value. Um, there, there's a very clear goal that's about something other than shareholder value and that has enabled SpaceX to become successful. We can also look at Tesla Motors, which contrary to popular idea was not founded by 
Elon Musk, but was taken over by Elon Musk because he was one of the early investors. Their mission statement is this. Tesla Motors was founded in 2003 by a group of intrepid Silicon Valley engineers who set out to prove that electric vehicles could be awesome. So again, not focused on shareholder value, focused on a purpose. What are we going to do for uh, wider society? But you do not have to be as rich as Elon Musk to do something valuable. So this is Jack Andraker. He was a 15 year old at the time who won the Intel Science Fair by building a diagnostic tool for pancreatic cancer after his uncle died from cancer. And the tool that he built detects a protein that's used as a biomarker using carbon nanotubes coated with antibodies. So his sensor is 100 times more selective than existing diagnostic tests, uh, and it's 168 times faster and 400 times more sensitive. And uh, obviously, as a parent myself, I want my kids to grow up like Jack and Draco, so I was interested to discover uh, what his parents did and their parenting techniques. So I read this article in Forbes where Jack and Draco talks about his parents, and he says his parents never really answered any of the questions they had. Excellent. This is a parenting technique that I can absolutely execute. Go figure it out for yourself, they would say. I got really into the scientific method of developing a hypothesis and testing it and getting a result and going back to do it again. And so this is really, again, at the heart of innovation. It's not about coming up with the best ideas. Anyone can come up with ideas and there's no way to know which ones are the best ones. The crucial bit is the discipline of turning those ideas into hypotheses that we can validate and test and then learning and then iterating. And so this idea was popularized in software development circles by Eric Ries in his book, The Lean Startup, which presents this model, which is a simplified version of the model that we looked at in unit one from testing business ideas. And this is called the build, measure, learn loop. And the idea is that you have an idea, you code something up, uh, as a prototype to test the idea. Then you uh, test the idea with real users and, and gather data and, and measure. And based on what you learn, you uh, revise that idea and go through the loop over and over again. And the key goal is how fast can we learn? That's our measure of productivity. How fast can we learn? And so this is why discovery and the discipline of discovery is really important.